victory would leave the door open for their dreaded rivals on Aston Villa to sneak into the Champions League. And Brian, that's something they would really hate. Well, there's always bragging rights, isn't there, as far as Birmingham and Aston Villa are concerned. But uh, Birmingham can't catch Villa, so they need to make sure that they end their season particularly well. So it's important they come here, they give a good performance in front of their own fans, which, uh, as far as Steve Bruce and his team are concerned, have been a progression once more from last season. So uh, Steve will be looking to build in the summer. We heard him in the interview beforehand and look to take them to that next step again. OK, let's check out the team news. Just one change from the Birmingham side that started against Arsenal last week, but it's a significant one. Leading scorer Mikel Forcell has overcome the knee injury that forced him to miss the trip to Highbury, and he resumes his partnership in attack with Clinton Morrison. It's a timely return for the Finnish international because David Dunn, who replaced him against the champions, has suffered a recurrence of his hamstring problem. Birmingham's longer-serving player, Ian Bennett, continues in goal in place of Mike Taylor, who's suspended. Well, I've been in the top ten for most of the season, so Steve will want his side to finish strongly against Liverpool today and Blackburn Rovers next week. You know, this team has looked sound defensively all season, with the two banks of four giving them good protection, and they've looked very well organised. And while Mikel Fussell has walked away with all the Player of the Year awards, I'm sure Steve will point to the performances of his skipper, Kenny Cunningham, as one of the reasons why they have done so well this season. Fussell's goals have been vital, but I've been even more impressed with his all-round link of play. And you can understand the delight of everyone at St Andrews that he will remain at the club for at least one more season. Stefan Onsho has failed to recover from the groin strain that forced him off at half-time in Liverpool's last game against Middlesbrough. So Jamie Carragher moves into the centre of defence and Steve Finnan comes in at right-back. There's one other change for Liverpool. The injured Vladimir Smitzer is replaced by Emil Heskey. So Harry Kewell will drop back into midfield and Heskey will resume his partnership in attack with Michael Owen. Well, this Liverpool squad have baffled everyone this season with its inconsistency. And when you look at the 11 Gerard Houllier plays today, you can understand the frustration. There's been a change at the back with Jamie Carragher playing alongside Sammy Hoopier at the heart of this back four. But I think it's that midfield four that really could be vital today. I think the balance of Murphy, Gerard, Haman and Kuehl look very good. And uh, certainly it's a bit part that really Liverpool need to get right, that middle third. And I think if they do and they stamp their authority, then you really can see them going on and winning the game. Because if they do create chances, then the front two, I'm sure, will look to profit from any opportunities created. Well, he's been brought back into the side recently, Danny Murphy, and he scored a couple of important goals from the penalty spot. But just as important is the composure and the balance he gives to this Liverpool side. Good quality on the ball, he can create as well as take chances, and he really is a big player. When he's playing well, I think he's such a vital and integral part of what Liverpool do well. Birmingham won 2-1 in the corresponding fixture last season, Liverpool's first defeat against them for 25 years. But the older Birmingham supporters still recall a famous day here at St Andrews. It was almost 50 years ago now when their team won 9-1, would you believe? It remains the heaviest defeat in Liverpool's history. Sorry, Liverpool beat Birmingham 3-1 when the teams met at Anfield five months ago. Mikel Fossell actually gave Steve Bruce's team the lead that day. A long walk to the pitch here. For Birmingham's final home game of a memorable season about to get underway. Steve Bruce has led them to the highest league position. Anyone here can remember, and they're determined to go out with a bang. Liverpool with the Champions League in their sights. They failed at the final hurdle last season. They certainly can't afford to fail again. Four years at Anfield, the Liverpool striker is rumoured to be on his way to Birmingham when the transfer window reopens. That's one of several high-profile signings that Steve Bruce hopes to complete during the summer. Birmingham this season hoping to finish in their highest league position for more than 30 years. And Liverpool, of course, with their sights set on fourth place. After this afternoon's games, they know that victory here would virtually eliminate Aston Villa from the equation, and it could then be a straight fight between Liverpool and Newcastle United, who meet at Anfield next Saturday. Liverpool in red, who needed telling Birmingham in the blue and white. Sammy Hoopier 
with the early clearance. Savage, the most popular player amongst the uh, Liverpool fans due to uh, several incidents the last time they met. And Steven Gerrard going in hard as well on Steven Clements, a Liverpool-born player, of course. Sammy Hupia up against his friend and Finnish international teammate Mikael Fossell. Here's Tebeli for Birmingham. Goes down by Didi Haman. Also barring the way to goal. Risa made the challenge and the linesman had flagged because uh, Risa injured himself and it looks quite a bad one as well. well. It seemed very overzealous, wasn't it, from Tebeli? Certainly lost control of the ball. He's trying to go with uh, John Arna Risa. And uh, Risa really is in agony there. Just have a look at He loses control and then he's just follow through there. And he catches John Arnorisa's trailing leg. Risa clears the ball and it's there. That's where he does the damage. It's right across his knee. So early in the game, you can see he loses control, follows through, and the pain on Risa's face there says it all. Big blow for the Liverpool player who's only just regained his place in the side, the Norwegian international. A week in which he's seen his former club, Monaco reached the Champions League final. Well, he looks in real pain, and that's concern for Gerard Hulier. Well, will be, especially having to reshuffle his back four coming into the uh, game today. You know, Stefan Onsho, of course, so he's pushed Jamie Carragher into a, an almost emergency centre-back role. Stevie Finning coming in at right-back, but uh, Risa having got back into this side, of course, uh, we'll probably feel the effects of that, certainly for the next five or ten minutes. And it'll be such a key time for Gerard Houllier and his medical team just to keep a very close watch on the Liverpool left-back. Igor Bishkan sent out to warm up in case he's needed. Dave Galley, the Liverpool physio, continues the treatment for Risa. Murphy for Liverpool. Here's Finnan. Into Michael Owen. Challenged by Savage. He wins the ball back. And goes early looking for Fussell. Birmingham will slip down to 10th after their run of six games without a win. Just one victory in their last nine Premiership games as Risa rejoins the action. Over the head of Heskey, Tebley's clear and straight to Murphy. He gives it straight back to the Birmingham right back, now Haman. And Finnan. Murphy. Gerard. It's a good ball for Kuehl. Very tight to the touchline. Beats Tepley's challenge, but uh, Tepley's there to win it back again. A little bit careful with Birmingham City fullback. There's a couple of occasions where he's been certainly rash in the way that he's gone into challenges. The second one against Harry Kuehl. Kuehl did brilliantly when he initially skipped past, but uh, Tepley managed to recover the situation. Already we've seen... Uh, the strong challenges, so it could be an interesting evening for uh, the referee Steve Dunn. It was a late shout, wasn't it? That's right. Should have been Howard Webb. Liverpool fourth on 56 points at the start of play. The same total of points now as Aston Boyle had a one-all draw at Southampton earlier today. But Liverpool do have a much better goal difference, plus 15 compared to Villa's plus six. Morrison's had at, Gerard cleaning it up for Liverpool eventually and Risa looking none the worse for his early injury. Owen, Cunningham who's been a real steady Eddie at the back for Birmingham this season. He's only missed one game in the whole campaign. I oh, said at the top, uh, what a great signing he's been for Steve Bruce. I think just that calming influence, that authority that he has at the back. And, well, I talked about it being a competitive start and already we've seen three challenges that almost X-rated. Well, that one on Clinton Morrison. It really was uh, a very wild challenge, wasn't it? With Jamie Carragher. I talked about him being pressed into a, an emergency centre-back role and uh, well, the referee just uh, having to issue one or two warnings so far. No yellow card. Free kick is indirect, as you can see Mr Dunn indicating. Before that, Savage was thinking of having a crack on target, which though he almost did anyway. Headed clear by Risa, and then Haman. I thought it was a good ball into the box, you know. I felt that Matthew uh, Upson could have made perhaps more of an effort to try and get on the end of that ball from Robbie Savage. It's Cunningham. It's 
happen. And for Damien Johnson. Savage. Kebeli. Cunningham goes long this time. The target is Mikel Fussell. Sammy Hoopier across to cover. Clearance has run loose to Johnson. dudek has got to get that. And he did. Lazaridis was the problem. He had to keep an eye on him too. Murphy for Liverpool. Good early pace to this game. Gerrard looking for Rowan. It's a great ball. Certainly caught out Cunningham. Another strong siding uh, tackle by Tebley. Owen keeps possession though. Haman. Reset. It's a lovely ball to find him. Heskey's there. And the layoff is poor. Straight to Stephen Clements. And for Sell. Johnson. Clemens, whose father, of course, was an Anfield legend. Johnson's cross. Flipped on by Morrison. Just in too far for Lazaridis. Clapham. Now Robbie Savage for Birmingham. Johnson. And Risa blocks the cross, but Johnson can try again. Heskey. The strength to hold off Savage. Reset the poor ball straight to Tebley. And the Ivory Coast International did well to keep possession and find Lazaridis. Savage. And I'm just got to foot it. A little period of possession though for the home side. Well, I talked about that midfield area being so vital, really. The chances of both sides. And they, both Liverpool and Bowen have had a little spell, haven't they, in that midfield third? seen Savage and Clements on the ball a few occasions and of course for Liverpool this man in control there Steven Gerrard feeding the likes of Murphy and Kuehl and now Heskey Owen wants it he's unmarked in the middle I was caught in two minds really wasn't he Emil Heskey I'm sure he's going for the strike on goal it's a great break isn't it very clever run and ball by Danny Murphy and then it, Emil Heskey on his favourite right foot I think he fancies a strike on goal and Michael Owen there really is lurking menacingly at the far post it's just in between isn't it a strike and a cross well, Shuri and Bennett the Birmingham keeper is just very very happy to see that ball run right across the face of the goal up here winning that particular battle but it's broken kindly here well it's uh, gone out now but Morrison almost getting in behind Jamie Carragher it's quite a windy day cold and cloudy as well you'd hardly guess that summer's supposed to be round the corner Steve Bruce, I'm sure, will enjoy his summer. Birmingham halfway down the first division when he took over a couple of years ago. He's since led them to their highest league position in over 40 years. He expects several new recruits during the close season. And here's one of them, probably, Emil Heskey, battling for possession with Upson. He certainly earned the right, hasn't he, to uh, spend a bit of money in the summer. The job that uh, Steve Bruce has done at this football club, you know, really has built from a very low base, and uh, he's taken them to uh, well, one of the uh, best finishes that they've had at this football club for many, many years. The only finishing position Liverpool are interested in now is fourth. Gerrard with a long sweeping ball, Cunningham has it under control. Well, does he? He must have got a shout from the goalkeeper, Bennett, because he quite deliberately let it go through, and Owen almost profited. <laughs> almost behaved like getting a sand wedge pitched to the green. He just really did stand up. Once it bounced, and Kenny Cunningham was very relieved that the keeper finally came and got it. The first choice goalkeeper, Mike Taylor, suspended for the match at Arsenal last week and again today after being sent off twice this season. He will be available for the final game for Birmingham. That's away to Blackburn next week. is the longest serving player here Harry Fry bought him from Peterborough over 10 years ago Murphy Haman and Finnan risky ball but it's worked out well reset Murphy 
popped up in one or two uh, strange areas, hasn't he, Danny Murphy? They've given the licence to roam around at times. He's come off that right wing and almost uh, playing behind the front two. We saw the ball that he played through for Emil Heskey. You know, he picked that up centrally. And it's very difficult to pick him up if he's going to come into those areas of the field. Play by Carragher. Johnson picks up the loose ball for Birmingham, who've drawn their last three games, taking only four points out of the last 18 available. Fossell. Morrison given offside, they wouldn't have counted. Yeah, that was a spot, wasn't it, by the uh, referee's assistant on this near side. It's very, very tight, isn't it? Fossell just trying to disguise his pass. Morrison running in behind. Probably not uh, have been amongst uh, too many goals this season, Clinton Morrison, but I'm sure that Steve Bruce will be delighted with his work rate and his tenacity when he does play up front for Birmingham. Alongside Fussell, they've combined well. Of course, Fussell uh, has been the mainstay as far as getting goals, but Morrison's done his bit for the cause. Cunningham's clearance to Savage. Fussell. Clements, Savage finding Lazaridis up against Finner. In early for Morrison, Fussell's behind him, that was an important header by Sammy Hoopier, Carragher completing the clearance. Coming him straight back in again. Finner, Haman. Well, that looked harsh from here. The foul given against Heskey on Upson. Well, it's a little bit unfortunate, Emil Heskey. When you look at the initial challenge from Matthew Upson, he's very close indeed to the big Liverpool striker, but uh, Heskey managed to turn Upson. A lot of space for him to run into, but... Uh... Upson takes the free kick. Away by Finnan. Good ball too for Gerrard. Now Harry Kuehl. atmosphere from a full house crowd of 30,000 here at St Andrews. Finnan, Kuehl. Into Murphy. So the game's crying out for a bit of whiff, isn't it? You know, we've seen the two wide players for Liverpool, Murphy and Kuehl, operate at times uh, in field. Here is Harry Kuehl. Danger here. Quite well, but uh, Upson with the block. Now Lazaridis for Birmingham. Hey, Wolfersell made a great run there. Just came short to then go long, and he's looking for the ball from Lazaridis. And Birmingham City left winger just had his head down a little bit too long. Didn't really see the pass. And certainly didn't see the run of Forsell. So he hoop his clearance to Haman. Now Finnan. Murphy into his left, finds Kuehl, Gerard, Janana Risa, Gerard picks out Kuehl, now Finnan, aimed at Heskey, oh, he couldn't control it quickly enough, Upson lashes it out of play, just needed to take uh, his first touch into that, that space that was lurking in front of him. Matthew Upson uh, managed to redeem the situation. Here goes Harry Kuehl lining up a long range shot again, gives it to Heskey instead. Certainly fooled the Birmingham defenders with his intent then. Oh, clever play, wasn't it, from Harry Kuehl. These are the areas really that Birmingham are struggling with. Kuehl and Murphy coming in field. Heskey gets a decent strike, but Kelly Cunningham, all his experience, just read the situation, came across. Always a threat. Hobson knows all about that. And Hoopier won the header as well. A man. Straight back in towards Owen. Birmingham hesitated. I think they might have been expecting an offside flag. It never came. Carragher. Gerard. Now Haman. Good football from Liverpool. Murphy. Kuehl in acres of space on the right. Heskey and Owen in the box. Murphy arriving as well. The best cross, really. And that's 
a free kick to Liverpool, foul on Finnan. Oh, good little spell, isn't this, for Liverpool at the moment? Good possession. And what a good chance this was for Michael Owen. As everybody runs out, Owen is lurking again. You can see him's a terrific ball from Didi Haman. And if he got his first touch right, Michael Owen, then it really was an absolute cert to convert that. There's Kuehl again. Haman. Gerard. Sammy Hupio lines up a shot. My word, it was a good effort as well. We've been used to seeing him down the years score a few headed goals. I don't think I've ever seen him hit a ball as sweetly as that. I was just about to say that would have been a collector's item, wouldn't it? Sammy Hupio scoring a 25 yarder with his right foot. It's a decent enough strike, wasn't it? But uh, once again, good pressure from Liverpool. They really are beginning to establish a stranglehold in this match. You can see there the amount of possession they're having and. Uh, I'm sure Steve Bruce won't be particularly happy, especially that midfield third. You know, Gerard, her man, you know, getting good opportunities to feed the ball into Harry Kuehl and Danny Murphy. And it's their prompting, really, that's allowing the front two plenty of service. Well, Sammy Hippie hit that ball so well, they've had to substitute it and put a new <laughs> ball on. Here's Cunningham. Easy clearance for Carragat. And all the signs are that Emil Heskey is likely to be on the move this summer, and he is likely to be on the move to St Andrews. That was very frustrating, isn't it, Emil Heskey? You know, you watch him some weeks and uh, he's almost unplayable, and then other weeks, uh, he's certainly off the pace of game, but he's looked particularly sharp so far. This evening, without uh, wanting to make an impression, if he is going to leave at the summer, there's uh, a lot of people looking to bring him into their football clubs. And he scored in Liverpool's 3-1 home win against Birmingham back in November. Up, yep. Now reset. Liverpool's victory against their fierce rivals Manchester United was their first win in eight away games in the Premiership since they won at Chelsea back in January. They've only managed five wins out of 18 on the road this season. Savage loses out to Haman. Now Kuehl. Gerard, we got that one all wrong. Still in play, and Finnan receives it. Carragher. Decent ball for Heskey, who held off Upson brilliantly and feeds it into Michael Owen. Chance here for Owen, but he just lost it on the second touch. Well, that was a terrific move, wasn't it? Michael Owen just applauding his strike partners. Pass to him. Really was slick, he was strong. Emil Heskey turns and uh, delivers a superb ball. And again, Michael Owen, there's two occasions. If he just got his first touch right, then you'd have to think that he would have converted that chance. But uh, the one that we saw from the pass from Herman, and now that ball from Heskey, there's two very good opportunities that have fallen the way of Michael Owen. And if only he could have just got his first touch a little bit more assured, then I'm sure Liverpool would have profited from it. have won 15 of their 36 Premiership games, drawn 11, lost 10, eight points fewer than the same stage last season when they went on to finish fifth, which was their lowest finishing position for four years. Kennedy. And Gerard will lose him of possession. Kuehl. Lisa to Haman. Kuehl again. He was the target, but Upson with a splendid header. Hooch has given it away to Morrison. Clements. Now Johnson. Both teams moving the ball really quickly. And in the main accurately, Clapham. Lazaridis. It's a good return. Clapham infield to Clements. 
And it goes to Morrison! What a good move that was. Well, it's the best move that Birmingham have put together. It's taken, what, just over 20 minutes. And this is uh, certainly the best uh, passing movement that Birmingham have put together. That's a clever little ball, wasn't it, from Stephen Clements? And, well, Clinton Morrison is bright enough and he's alert. He gets a decent enough strike away, perhaps always looking to rise and may well have gone over the bar, but Jersey Dudek wasn't going to take any chances. Here's Lazaridis. It's a very good ball in, and Dudek with a very nervous punch away till Risa helped him out, then straight back in again from Clapham. Home fans responding to this excellent period for Birmingham. Johnson. Well, he was always running into trouble there. Gerard. Haman. Liverpool at their best breaking like this, but Haman uh, with a poor pass. It was a good opportunity, wasn't it, if Haman could have found the pass, but I understand what Dudek was doing moments earlier. It really would have been uh, so much easier just to catch the ball. He was under no real pressure. But very nervous when that ball came into the box, the Liverpool keeper. Started the last dozen games now since uh, Kirkland broke his wrist. Murphy. Tepperley wins it back and just as well he did for Birmingham. Owen oh, got away in behind him. Here's Johnson. Clements. has inadvertently given it straight to Danny Murphy. Gerrard. Nobody in support at the moment down the right. Finnan now arriving. Gerrard. There's Michael Owen. Pukia. Steven Gerrard, the Liverpool captain. Looking for Heskey. It was a good ball. And it's come out to Michael Owen. Brilliant by Bennett. Oh, Brilliant. What a, what a save that was. It's a big, big stop as well from the Birmingham keeper. And this time Michael Owen does manage to get the ball out of his feet. Emil Heskey, the player that really is causing the concern. And that ball is thrown forward. And thankfully for Bennett, he manages to get it the second time. It's a decent enough touch, isn't it, from Michael Owen? I'm sure he's willing away. He thinks it's going to perhaps just get over that line. But it might not be first choice here at Birmingham City, Ian Bennett. But he just made a big save. In fact, it's only his sixth appearance of the season. Kill. Johnson. And Savage has given it away. He was lucky there, Robbie Savage. Very lucky. Been his usual self, has he, Robbie Savage? I've really seen an awful lot of him. You know, if he's uh, not on the ball, he tends to be really upset in the rhythm of other teams in that midfield area but really struggled to get to grips with the likes of Herman and Gerard. and I think just the mobility that Liverpool have shown in particularly the two wide players you know they've really come off the line on a number of occasions and it really has given Birmingham a lot of problems to deal with Owen very deep Hupia now reset just calming it down, bringing the game to their pace again. Gallagher closed down by Morrison, that's good play by Clinton Morrison. Well, they say the best defending starts in attack. Well, that's the example I was talking about, Clinton Morrison. You know, he might not uh, be anywhere near double figures as far as goals are concerned, but it's that type of energy that really uh, Steve Bruce and the rest of the Birmingham City side have admired him for his performances. and. Uh, can see why he's such a big favourite because he really does give everything Clinton Morrison he's second top scorer here with just four goals four seven scored 17 of the 42 premiership goals that Birmingham have it's one of the poorest totals in the uh, top half of the table and indeed there are several teams in the bottom half with a better scoring record than Birmingham but defensively is another story to say that they've uh, certainly been second best in the majority of this first half really to the way Liverpool have passed the ball and, uh, some decent chances in particular that one we saw from Michael Owen but really, uh, as an attacking force we haven't really seen an awful lot of uh, Birmingham City in particular for Sell he's been kept very quiet 
Tabelli. Oh, a risky thing to do against Kuehl. Gerrard. Ah, well played Damian Johnson. And he's fouled by Murphy. That's Steven Gerrard's furious, isn't he? He's just going to go at Sally Hoopier, claiming that uh, really should have had a shout. Tapham. Savage takes over. Now Lazaridis with a bit of room ahead of him for once. Good ball in, Morrison's header! That was a decent ball, wasn't it? Well, it's actually a decent chance, and uh, Clinton Morrison just recognising the part that Stan Lazaridis has to play. Gets away from his marker, and I'm sure that uh, Gerard Hulley will be a little bit disappointed. Just look there at the two centre-backs. Carrigan, who will be nowhere near Clinton Morrison, when that ball came into the danger area. Kill straight to Cunningham. There's one for Morrison to chase again. Awkward header for Carragher. He's given it away. Savage. Oh, that's poor, isn't it? Probably Savage. Ought to have done better that. Lots of time and room. Judgment Day in the nationwide first division tomorrow. Six teams going for three playoff places. We're live at Portman Road, Ipswich against Cardiff at noon on Sky Sports 1. If you prefer, on Sky Sports 2, you can watch Coventry against Crystal Palace. Of course, we'll be updating the scores from all the other matches that matter. Hobson. Over the head of Fussell this time. Carrigan knows he won't get a breather with Morrison, so does Dudek. As possible way, he's a real irritant, Clinton Morrison. He just <laughs> never stops closing down defenders. Here he is again. In fact, I think a few of his Birmingham teammates will tell you he's an irritant. Full stop. <laughs> There's a few uh, players up and down the country who probably uh, agree with that statement as well. He's normally got a bit to say for himself. <laughs> well, he's lively and uh, he's committed to the cause. Well, that's a type of players that Steve Bruce. Uh, has looked to bring into this football club. He knows he really can't compete with uh, a lot of the big money signings, so he's had to bring in players that are going to work extremely hard. Here's Owen. Brilliant run by Owen. Brilliant goal by Michael Owen. Don't write him off. At your peril. I'll tell you what, the big thing about his goal is the composure Michael Owen shows. You know, it's a fabulous ball through to him. And once again, Emil Heskey playing his part. Great pace on the ball but there he never gets flustered he knows Kenny Cunningham's breathing down his neck gets the ball out of his feet he knows exactly where the keeper is it's very very tight and this time Bennett has no chance whatsoever wonderful composure great strike and people keep telling me Michael Owen's having a bad season what's that now 18 goals correct and he'll be leading scorer for the seventh season in a row Four in four against Birmingham as well. well. You have to say that they've deserved it, Liverpool. Have been the better side, created the majority of the chances that we've seen so far. Can't really remember too many saves that Jersey Dudek has had to make. Perhaps that one that he palmed over the bar from Forsell, but Clinton Morrison rather. But it's been a very quiet first half for the Liverpool keeper. Savage plays the free kick in. For Upson, it's Eskew headed away. Here's Owen, the goal scorer. Gerard is possessed again by Damian Johnson. Lapper. Coming up to the half hour mark, Liverpool with a critical lead. Azaridis. After today, of course, Liverpool will have played two games more than Newcastle will play Wolves at home tomorrow and Southampton away on Wednesday before the two clubs meet, of course, at Anfield next Saturday. Heskey, Owen, great interplay between those two. Kewell, 
Oh, in the target again. Oh, Cunningham had to throw himself at that one. Oh, such a tantalising ball, wasn't it, from Harry Keel? And Kenny Cunningham does well. But once again, good attacking play from Liverpool. Heskey and Owen really have looked a threat during the course of the uh, opening half an hour. And the likes of Keel and Murphy have been prominent. And they really have looked threatening every time they've gone forward, Liverpool. Cleared by Cunningham, Liverpool will get it back in again. Gerard, great ball. Hamann took a swing at it. Could have gone anywhere that. I don't know if he got a decent strike with that, did he, a man? But he was on target. I really can't have seen uh, Ian Bennett stop that because there were so many players in front of the goalkeeper. That's the Liverpool fans whose voices you can hear at the moment. This is long throw. And got that ahead of Hupia. Haman there again. Kuehl. Murphy. Harry Kuehl. Michael Owen doing brilliantly. Oh, on the back here to find Sammy Hupia. Oh, that's an unusual Liverpool move. And there's a big gap left now because Sammy Hupia is at the other end of the field. Murphy was there to fill it. full allocation of tickets the uh, fans are behind the goal there defending in this first half and I think very pleased with the opening half an hour or so for their team Owen! Owen! Well, Birmingham have built a reputation this season for keeping clean sheets 15 before today only Chelsea have had more than that but in recent weeks, their defence has not been quite so uh, impressive. And because, as we mentioned earlier, they don't get many goals themselves. If they go behind in a the game, they've got a problem. Reset. Kuehl. Haman. I must say, they're playing some wonderful football at the moment, Liverpool. Yeah, I think the movement really is confusing Birmingham City. I talked about that midfield third, really has been all Liverpool in this uh, first half. You know, we can't really think of too many times where the likes of uh, Damian Johnson, Stan Lazaridis, Clements or Robbie Savage have had really an impact. And uh, it's been all about Gerard, Kuehl, Herman and Danny Murphy. And because of that, they've had a great platform to go and take the game to Birmingham. And the front two, Heskey and Owen, really have looked very sharp indeed. All given away, Finnan's cross aimed at Owen. Murphy's right up alongside him. Tebbley knew that and heads out for a throw. They can take their time now. to Risa from Gerard, but uh, didn't work out like that. I well, certainly just want to see things through now till half-time, Liverpool. And uh, just over ten minutes to go. Very much in control of this uh, first half. One nil ahead. And uh, everywhere you look, there's a lot of good performances in this uh, red shirt. And uh, Birmingham really haven't got the grips. You know, the pace that they normally play at when they're always unsettling sides. Well, that hasn't happened. And I'm sure Steve will be very disappointed. I have a lot of words to say to his team at half-time. Here's Damian Johnson. Savage. Cunningham. Now Tebbley. Paul Sells call for the early cross. But he didn't want to play there, I'm afraid. Gerard. Murphy. Now Didi Haman. It's Finnan. Kuehl. Look at the white players are popping up though, Alan. That's the problem Birmingham have got. We've just seen Kuehl and Murphy. And yet you've got Steven Gerrard playing as a left winger. And it's that uh, 
type of play that uh, give real confusion to the Birmingham City players. His reset. A man steps in to win it back for Liverpool, who are dominating at the moment. He's a big player, Hamad. You know, when uh, the type of movement that we have seen, it's important that one player sits in, and Haman does it as well as anybody in the Premier League, just shielding that back four and making sure that when he's on the ball, you know, he's always looking to be very safe with his passes and invariably never gives the ball away. Well, Birmingham went through long periods like this a week ago against the champions at the Highbury, where they saw the opposition dominating possession, crucially, of course, on that occasion. They kept a clean sheet throughout. Now a goal down. It's going to be hard for them to get back. Hobson. On by Forsell to Morrison. Back again to the leading scorer. Oh, brilliant run by Mikael Forsell. That's superb play. <laughs> well, he took on the Liverpool defence single-handedly. <laughs> nearly about 4,000 fans behind the goal as well. Mesmerising footwork, wasn't it, from Fussell? Well, we've seen that on a few occasions, haven't we, this season? Looks as if uh, Clinton Morrison's got a little bit of a problem at the moment, just limping around. Fussell has been one of the first to praise the contribution of Clinton Morrison in Fussell's own excellent season. Uh, wonderful footwork, hasn't it? You know, uh, I said at the top, really, you know, as much as uh, he's a goal scorer, there's a lot of other things as well. And this is one part of his game that he is really is terrific. Running at defenders, there's four Liverpool defenders. Clapham comes to win it back and find Morrison. Forsell takes over. And the back heeler just in behind Johnson. That was unlucky. Gerard. Cunningham. Now Robbie Savage. Clapham right on the left. Rossell. Back again to Clapham. Morrison's there too. So was Risa for Liverpool. Well, that stemmed from fullback Jamie Clapham getting forward. And I think they've got to do this more because the way that Liverpool play, the likes of Murphy and Kula coming in field, there's an opportunity for the likes of Clapham and Tebbley to get forward and be a threat. Birmingham have been as high as fourth this season. They would have loved, of course, to finish above Aston Villa as they did last season. Well, that's not going to happen now. In fact, last season, Birmingham were the highest placed Midlands club for the first time in almost 100 years. An amazing uh, statistic. And a great tribute again to the job that Steve Bruce has done here. There's Lazaridis. Tebbley. Johnson. Got plenty of players forward in the Liverpool box here. Tebbley couldn't find any of them. Morrison keeping it in play. Clapham. Liverpool have all 11 men. Back behind the ball. Tebbley. Clements. Now Johnson. Good move by Birmingham. Cross probably needed to go in earlier. Tebbley. It's Esky there to clear. Now Danny Murphy. Oh, he did well there, Danny Murphy. Hurt himself as well, making the challenge on Savage. Well, he could have a problem here, you know. Danny Murphy really was a crunching tackle from Robbie Savage. And that's what I was saying earlier. You know, it wasn't malicious. But uh, Robbie Savage really is renowned for just upsetting the rhythm of midfield players and he really does come across and makes the perfect time challenge against Danny Murphy the two players very competitive looking to win the challenge and I'm sure that really just shuddered and jarred the knee of the Liverpool midfield player 
No way he was going to pull out of that though. You know, this really is the hallmark of a great finisher. The run, the touch, and the finish. And you know, a lot of people will look at that goal and think, well, it was routine, but it wasn't routine because it was wonderful composure. It was a tight angle. He needed to get it absolutely spot on. And how many times have we seen Michael Owen do that during the course of his career? That was his sixth goal in the last nine Premiership games. His Liverpool record is over 150 goals, that is, in less than 300 appearances. In the modern game, well, <laughs> literally, those statistics speak for themselves. It's called phenomenal. It's called world-class, and uh, hopefully he'll show that on the international stage this summer for England. Finnan is possessed by Clemens, who finds Forsell. Put too much on that for Morrison, but he'll keep running as ever. Carragher realised he uh, wouldn't have time to dwell on that one. He's done well, hasn't he, Jamie Carragher? Well, it's not easy, is it? He played a left back, right back, now centre back. Good header away by Risa Heskey. Murphy recovered well and finds Kuehl. It's been a very good game, uh, good end to end stuff, a lot of good possession, excellent football. Heskey, Haman, now Gerard. Here's Steve Finnan. Canada takes his time before picking out what he hopes was going to be the right ball, but it wasn't. Bad delivery, didn't it, into the, uh, the front two. Heskey and Owen have been a threat when the ball has got forward to them. In the final third, uh, when you look at the two sides, we talked about earlier, we haven't really seen an awful lot of Fussell or Morrison. We've seen an awful lot of Michael Owen and Emil Heskey. Liverpool have, according to the statistics, had more shots on target than any other team in the Premiership this season. Also tighten up at the back in recent weeks. Three successive clean sheets. Since Sean Bartlett's winner for Charlton and Anthony Savage. Being told to calm down there by the referee. Some hope there. Well, that's a wild one, isn't it? Robbie Savage. Really was wild. Did he have man? But it's his first one, and I think that's why Steve Dunn decided not to give me yellow card. He's had 15 of those this season, Robbie Savage. Just the 15. But still, and some people find it uh, amazing, he's never been sent off in his career. It's an incredible statistic when you look at the competitive nature that Robbie Savage possesses. Carragher. Cunningham wins the header against Heskey. Clements. And if he's winning it back. Kuehl. Gerard. Hobson just helps it on to Jamie Clapper. It's easy for Sammy Hoopier. Kuehl. That's a Redis now for Birmingham. A man with a wild challenge, got to be a free kick. I think the service has got to be better to the front two, though. You know, we've seen a number of occasions where Birmingham have tried to go along and uh, just really trying to pick up the bits and pieces as Stan Lazaridis was there. Decent opportunity, a couple of minutes to go before half-time, and uh, they came pretty close, you know. In the first five minutes, Robbie Savage knocked a great ball in, and I thought Matthew Upson may have gone for it with a little bit more determination. It needs to be better quality than that. A lot flatter, far too easy for the Liverpool keeper. for Liverpool. Stoppage time approaching, there won't be too much of that. Two minutes, in fact. Heskey, brilliant ball by him for Michael Owen's goal. A sweeping ball there by Gerrard to Finnett. Side decision against Michael Owen. 
I see Bruce uh, just trying to retrieve the ball there. I'm sure he'll be very disappointed with his side's first half performance. He needs, he knows that they need to be a lot better than what we've seen in this first half. And I think they need to play with a little bit more pace, certainly a lot more determination and perhaps a lot more belief. Here's the man who can get them back into it though. Porcel's shot took a little deflection and that took the sting out of it. And he really did work the opening superbly well again. Once again, just have a look at the footwork there. Brilliant skills from Forsell. You can see why he's lit up St Andrews this season. Well, the other Birmingham players do literally rave about uh, his ability in training and in matches. Owen almost getting in behind the defence again. This time it was better defending, wasn't it? Just have a look at the position of uh, Matthew Upson. Just gets his body across front of Michael Owen, Shepard's the ball back to the goalkeeper. Here it's by John Arna Risa. going for this with Carragher and winning the header as well. Hanan there to protect the Liverpool back four. Lazaridis. And there's the half-time whistle. What is it they say? Form is temporary, class is permanent. Michael Owen showed just why. A superb finish. They say it's been a disappointing season for England's long-time number one striker, but that was his 18th goal and his sixth in the last nine Premiership matches. It's given Liverpool a deserved lead. They've played some very good football. Birmingham have had their moments too, but they go off at St Andrews in their final home game, trailing by one goal to nil. Yes, a very impressive first 45 minutes for Liverpool, but perhaps crucially, they haven't killed Birmingham off. George's thoughts after the break. Michael Owen, bang on target, a terrific finish. Emil Heskey played his part, but Michael Owen, outstanding. Seven games without defeat. That's from 3.30 on Sky Sports 1. Half-time at St Andrews and Liverpool have edged in front by a Michael Owen goal to nil. Birmingham without a win in six, drifting a little as the season draws towards a close. And Steve Dunn, perhaps surprisingly, has let the game flow. No yellows or reds as yet. <coughs> Liverpool halfway towards a third successive league victory and they look very comfortable at the moment, don't they? Yeah, I think they deserve their, uh, their one goal lead, Marcus, and uh, they've started nice and brightly, they're moving the ball around with a nice tempo to their passing. And the front two, you know, and I was probably criticising a little bit in the first, uh, the first half, Emil Heskey and Michael Owen, their partnership today looks very dangerous. This almost put them in front and Ian Bennett does well. Made a very good save and a good recovery as well. And uh, that was the front two again. Heskey using his power. And Michael Owen just getting a half shot in there. Could have scored. And, and this must have been what Gerard Houllier envisaged when he put them together in the first place. Yes, but I mean, it's, just, it's not come off week in, week out. But this, this first 45 minutes, they've looked very, very potent. Well, shortly after that, they um, gelled together for the goal. Birmingham mm. are complaining at half-time. They reckon that it might just have touched Emil Heskey's hand as he plays the through ball. Well, it's come from own. Danny Murphy here, and I think that's really clutching his straws there. But a great ball from Heskey. You know, and Michael Owen, you know, what cool finish. That is top quality. This is perhaps a better angle to see Heskey. I think it looks as if it comes off his thigh. Yeah. But that's a tremendous ball, right in a lovely little hole there, down the channel. And Michael Owen, just the outside of his foot here, finishes it. That's a great ball by Heskey. He does look to be yeah. back to his very best, doesn't he? Yeah, the two of them. I think the two of them have really played well and they're causing, which well, I think Birmingham's back four, a very good back four. Saw them last week at Highbury, they were outstanding. And that took a very special goal to, to Pearson today. Will, will, will Gerard Hulley be a little concerned that Birmingham are still in this match? They have one opportunity in particular, Stephen Clements playing in Clinton Morris, and he couldn't take that, but... With only a goal separating the two sides, it's by no means yeah, over, is Yeah, this is probably, it? I think this, this is the move. It's a lovely move, you know, right throughout the team. A lovely final ball from Stephen Clements here. Clinton Morrison, unfortunately, gets underneath the ball. He's got to go on top and knock it back into the ground. 
It just takes it on the rise. You had to wait for it just a little bit, didn't you? A little you? bit. But you've also always got to remember, you always try to hit the ball down into the ground. I think if it had hit it down there, I think that would have been a very good goal. It was, it was Birmingham's best move of the first half. We've seen market. nothing for sale so far, have we? Very quiet, very quiet. But that's typical for sale. You know, you'll, you'll not see him for 20 minutes, and all of a sudden he'll pop up and score a wonderful goal. That's our thought for building him up before the game. <laughs> so half time, it is one 0 If it stays like this, Aston Villa will effectively be ruled out of the Champions League situation. Three points behind Liverpool with one game to go, and a vastly inferior goal difference. Can Birmingham do their neighbours a favour? in the second half. That's next. Tomorrow we have two live games for you. An Ipswich win against Cardiff will guarantee their participation in the playoffs. That's on Sky Sports 1 from midday. And on Sky Sports 2 you can see Coventry against Crystal Palace. Peter Reid's first game in charge of Coventry. A point for Palace and they'll be in the playoffs. Early today in the Premiership. Everton won Bolton 2, Bolton's fifth successive victory, keeping alive their hopes of a UEFA Cup spot. Leeds 3, Charlton 3, Leeds 3-1 up with 14 minutes to go and Alan Smith scored a penalty in what was probably his last game as a Leeds player at Ellen Road. But Charlton came back thanks to two late strikes from Jason Newell, one of those a penalty as well. Leicester 3, Portsmouth 1, Manchester United 1, Chelsea 1 in the early kickoff. Middlesbrough beating Manchester City by the odd goal in three. Southampton 1, Aston Villa 1, an Angel penalty for Villa. Kevin Davis equalised, blunting Villa's Champions League hopes. And Spurs 1, Blackburn 0, Jermaine Defoe after 18 minutes. Liverpool. Winning by a goal to nil at St Andrews at half-time. No changes by Gerard Houllier. Birmingham will presumably have to go for broke to some extent. Let's rejoin Brian Marwood and Alan Parry. Well, I'm sure Sven and Eriksson will be pleased to see the way Michael Owen has played so far today and particularly pleased to see the way in which he took his goal. Great old football character Len Ashurst is here today as the match assessor. He actually began his career as a player at Liverpool in the 1950s and Birmingham are sending a team to play in his testimonial game at Cardiff City on May the 17th with half the proceeds going to charity. Support it if you can if you live in that area. And uh, as a Sunderland man, Brian, I'm sure you remember, what was it, over 500 games Len played for them. Yeah, he's a big favourite, and uh, I gather he's returning to the North East, so uh, we're uh, looking forward uh, to getting back on, well, he'll regard his home soil now. Birmingham on home soil for the final time this season, and obviously, they'll go out on a high if they can, in front of this uh, adoring, packed crowd. 13th last season, it was their first back in the top flight for 16 years, Sixth is the highest they've ever finished in the top division. That was way back in the 1950s. But they have a couple of targets over 30 years since they finished in the top 10 of the highest division. And that's the one in their sights. But uh, recent form has seen that particular target recede quite into the distance yet, but it's uh, certainly getting to be just a speck on the horizon. Six games without a win before today, remember, and one behind to the Liverpool team who get the second half underway. They're very much like Charlton Athletic in uh, many respects, haven't they, Birmingham City? They've just uh, faltered at the final straight, and, uh, well, it's an area, no doubt, Steve Bruce will want to put right for next season. Uh, we've very much talked about he's going to bring in new players in the summer, and they uh, be hoping that he can take them to that next level and I guess that next level for Birmingham City is a real crack at a European position. Goals by Risa has gone out of play, Birmingham's throw. Steve Bruce has only beaten Liverpool once in his managerial career, that was 2-1 in the corresponding fixture here last season. And of course as a former Manchester United legend he uh, gets particular pleasure I think out of beating the men from Anfield. deck in control. I wouldn't be surprised if Steve had one or two harsh words to say at half-time because uh, I think he'll be expecting more of his team and uh, certainly played second fiddle didn't he to Liverpool in the first 45 minutes. Everywhere you looked Liverpool were dominant. The back, midfield and up top. 
Damian Johnson. And they've got to keep believing Birmingham. And uh, they want to draw inspiration. Remember, when they played Liverpool at Anfield in November, Birmingham took the lead. Liverpool went on to win. So why not do the same thing in reverse? That will be the, uh, the banter, I'm sure, as Gerard Houllier and Steve Bruce enjoy a little joke. Bill Thompson, as usual, looking steely and serious. Here's Mikael Fossel. Morrison is up with him. Steven Gerrard forced back towards his own goal. Oh, recovered the situation because it was his error, really, that allowed Fossel to run at the heart of the Liverpool defence. Once again, a typical competitive performance from Steven Gerrard. Really does lead the way, doesn't he, in a majority of performances. Certainly has been this season. Really has been outstanding. And otherwise, a, a very inconsistent season, really, in many respects for Liverpool. But a real big prize ahead of them now. Can they finish fourth? I think they take three points today and then uh, certainly finish things off against uh, Newcastle United at home. So we'll play Wolves tomorrow, remember, and then Southampton in midweek. It's going to be tough for them at the back of their disappointment in the uh, UEFA Cup semi-final and, of course, all the injuries. Johnson. Here's Tebeli. Showed too much of the ball to John Arnavisa. Savage. Johnson. Clemens takes over. Oh dear. A great shame. I mean, Stephen Clemens doesn't need telling that uh, it needs to provide a little bit more quality from that area of the field. But you know, we saw Tebley again get forward and again lose control of the ball. And you know, talked about the movement of the wide players that Liverpool have had today. So important if Tebley and Clapton can get into those advanced areas and they can be more assured and certain with their touch, then there's an opportunity there for Birmingham City and they need to exploit that. I think one of the criticisms of a lot of Liverpool fans this season has been that when Liverpool have got themselves into winning positions like this, they tended to be cautious and protect their lead rather than trying to build upon it, and consequently have lost a lot of points. It's never ever comfortable, is it? Just at 1-0. We've seen that uh, time and time again over the course of the season. Really, Liverpool need to press out from this position now. They've had enough of possession, and they've uh, created the best chances, but certainly need another goal to just deflate Birmingham City even further. There's Lazaridis. There's a great ball in from almost on the touchline, but uh, I guess Budek always favourite. That was a better claim, wasn't it? More confident by the Liverpool goalkeeper. Definitely misjudged the bounce. Kuehl. Him with a block. I'm a bit surprised that Harry Kuehl didn't go and try and take Denny Cunningham on in that situation. He elected to take the strike early, 1v1 against the Birmingham City skipper. Lisa's throw to the Australian international, Gerard. Sammy Hoopier for Liverpool. Good ball for Owen. Just had a little bit too much on it, didn't it? A fabulous run from Michael Owen. Just spotting the space where to run into, and uh, he's looked very bright and sharp today. Sometimes I think when you look at Michael Owen, you know, his body language tells you how he's feeling. Well, today I think his body language is uh, telling everybody that he's back to some sort of form and sharpness, and certainly when you look at the way that he took his goal, well, Wonderful composure, great finish. Kills back healer and Gerard breaks into space. Heskey's up with him. What a magnificent Liverpool goal. Emil Heskey, creator of the first, scorer of the second. That was pure class. Well, they can all rejoice. It's a wonderful flick, isn't it? From Harry Kill from the throw-in. And then the build-up, the run, the surge 
from Steven Gerrard and then the quality of the pass into Emil Heskey. And I talked about what a good goal the first one was in the composure of the finish. Well, this is just as good. You know, they look simple finishes, but they aren't. You need to make sure that you concentrate and you're very assured about your first touch. And Emil Heskey was, and that really has summed up his performance today, Heskey. And it's very fitting that both the front two of Owen and Heskey have got the goals that have put them ahead. Heskey's 12th goal of the season. Also scored, of course, against Middlesbrough last week. But, uh, coming on as a half-time substitute at Anfield. His career average, by the way, with Leicester and Liverpool is just about one goal in every four games. It's not outstanding, but he brings so much more to his game than simply being a goal scorer. Yeah, he does, but this is the frustration a lot of people have with Emil Heskey. You know, you'll see him give a performance like we've seen today, and then you'll see other performances that really are lacklustre. And you wonder whether at times he's playing, but when he's in this sort of form and he's got this sort of desire to have an impact on a football match, yeah, talk about it. You know, you're talking about a very good defensive side in Birmingham City. But actually, he's taken on the likes of Cunningham and Upson, who've had outstanding seasons at the heart of the Birmingham defence, and they really, at times, haven't been able to contain him. Well, I don't think Liverpool will be sitting back on their lead now, somehow. They've got the bit between their teeth here. Murphy. And it clears under pressure, straight back to Gerrard. Savage. Yeah, with the tackle on Johnson, and Kuehl bowls him over, I think it's only a throw the ref's given. It's incredible isn't it when you think that uh, Liverpool last, well so the fact they've only won one away game since January the 7th and of course it was a fantastic away result wasn't it at Old Trafford against Manchester United. Here's Morrison, back to Johnson. Aridis went between the two defenders. Gerard's clearance. Kuehl just got the head uh, ahead of Tebele. Now Michael Owen. Liverpool breaking with real pace and in numbers, but Murphy got that one wrong. Damien Johnson for Birmingham. Now 2 0 down. stretch well, he took control of the situation nothing wrong with that Jamie Carragher I think he's really adapted well to playing centre back today not that really Birmingham have been in the final third on that many occasions but there you can see take no chances played over 300 games for Liverpool now Jamie Carragher Matthew Upson coming round the back but Dudek got there first Here's Murphy. Being pulled over there by Johnson, knocked straight into the advertising hoarding. And the referee has decided that that is the first challenge of the game, worthy of a caution. Yeah, it's a daft one, isn't it? Yeah, you pick up an unnecessary yellow card and it's late. You can see here that uh, Danny Murphy uh, talks at the top, the composure and the quality that he brings to this. Liverpool side, and there you can see that he's bundled over the touchline. I mean, Johnson yellow carded. They've made a big improvement on the disciplinary front this season, Birmingham. They had uh, just about the worst record in the Premiership last season with over 70 cautions and five men sent off. In fact, they had a suspended FA fine. Much better this time, though. Then his clearance. Gets there ahead of Emil Heskey this time. Owen. Haman. Here's reset. Kuehl out on the left touch line. One trick too many in the end. Damien Johnson. In quickly, Hanan. Now Hupia. Kuehl failing to keep that on the field. Birmingham's throw. And they've got another about 
uh, 30 yards further down the field. They have had an excellent season, Birmingham, but they don't want it to go out uh, with a whimper now, of course. Especially as this is their last home game, remember? So I'm sure they'll keep the foot on the pedal here. Lazaridis with the knockdown to Forsell, just beaten to it by Gerard. Murphy. And again, Danny Murphy. Haman. This is Reset. The German international takes over again and finds Steve Finnan. Birmingham chasing, closing down, harrying, but they just can't get the ball back. They will now. Dudek sliced his clearance. I think it'll be long before Steve Bruce makes one or two changes. Just to really try and spice things up because uh, his side really haven't been in the game at all. Clapham looking for Clinton Morrison. Away by Carragher. Finnan. Murphy. Under pressure from Clements. Good ball out by Haman. Finds Gerard. Oh, and that's a great ball for Heskey too. Owen and Kuehl in the middle. Here's Harry Kuehl. Oh. Still kept possession though, Gerrard, now he tries his luck, it was a good effort, fine save. That was measured wasn't it from Steven Gerrard, good break wasn't it though. Yeah, Emil Heskey on this right hand side, that's actually a decent first touch, takes him into the box, he spots Harry Kuehl, just behind though Kuehl, always difficult then to get his control, but Steven Gerrard almost retrieves the situation with a strike towards the far post, certainly going wide wasn't it. Clapham. Johnson Clements Lazaridis clever little ball Morrison here's Clapham with the cross but to no one in particular cool make sure it's uh, not a risky one anyway and there's going to be three Changes made by Steve Bruce. That's bold. Hughes, Cisse, and John all coming off. Let's see who's going off. Jamie Clapham's the first. Adieu Cisse, Senegal's World Cup captain, will take his place. Stephen Clements next to depart. Robbie Savage makes it a hat trick of substitutions. Brian Hughes on for him. I was saying it wasn't the uh, normal Rob Robbie Savage performance that uh, we've seen time and time again. But to be fair to Liverpool, they really have outpassed the Birmingham midfield four. And uh, Savage really hasn't been able to unsettle anybody in that area of the field. Uh, we must see whether uh, these changes make an impact really. Not only on Liverpool, but actually on the Birmingham side, because I'm sure Steve will be very disappointed that the fact that uh, they haven't really given him the sort of performance that uh, the St Andrews fans have been used to this season. Johnson's cross, Carragher in there, with Stern John, who's made an immediate impact and settled Carragher there, but he's still got it clear to Heskey, dispossessed by Lazaridis. That's given Birmingham a lift, those changes. Here's Forsell. Stern John wanted it early. Forsell's got other ideas. Oh, and they managed to play it over both Stern John and Clinton Morrison's heads. He actually does the hard bit. He really does. I'm not sure uh, where the Liverpool back four are. They get caught napping here. And as Forsell runs into the box, it's very difficult to even make a challenge on him. But uh, Jamie Carragher doesn't even really get that close to him. And when Forsell does the hard bit, looking for that little bit of quality to Here's play in a teammate. Running him up against him. <laughs> Tony made, I think, uh, one appearance since he represented Senegal in the African Nations at UCC. And Steve Bruce has decided to throw him on, along with Stan John. Brian Hughes. Hughes getting a bit of a mixed reaction from the uh, home fans. He's said that he's unlikely to stay here. 
Not going to sign a, another contract after seven years as a Birmingham player. And certainly given uh, Birmingham great service, hasn't he, Brian Hughes? And uh, scored his fair share of goals for the football club over the time that he's been here, but perhaps frustrated that uh, he's not really getting the sort of opportunities in the first team. And of course, if Steve does bring new players in, Here's clearance, going straight to Cissé, and away by Finnan, Owen was coming back from an offside position. Header on by Hughes, Carragher. That's a little bit better, isn't it, from Birmingham? You know, just trying to raise the temperature, you know, get the fans uh, shouting and clapping a, a little bit more. And, uh, seems to be a little bit more zest in their performance, and they've needed that, Birmingham. Upset. Cissé. Coming on a lonely figure in the Birmingham half. Morrison. Done well, Clinton Morrison and got his cross in. Hughes on the far post. Finland did enough to put him off. Good header away by Upson. Hughes. Lazaridis. Bit of belief about Birmingham City now. Four out. Lazaridis. Stern John in the middle, but it wasn't the best ball. Stout clear by Risa. And suddenly, of all people, it's Stephen Gerrard who breaks loose, he's got round Cunningham, now the referee has to decide whether that's a red card offence, and it is. Got the beat, last defender, Kenny Cunningham knew he's been around the game an awful long time, he knew what uh, the referee Steve Dunn was going to produce, and that was a red card, but I'll tell you what, what about the pace and the strength of Steven Gerrard, had no real right to get in behind Kenny Cunningham, Cunningham has a yard or two on him, but Gerrard just goes into overdrive, and once he's passed him, yeah, there's no doubt whatsoever, he's the last defender, he cuts across Steven Gerrard there, he pulls him back, he trips him up. Well, how do you sort that one out? 2-0 down to Liverpool, down to 10 men. And a free kick in a very dangerous position. He's made all his changes as well, Steve Bruce, because I'm sure that he may well have uh, elected to put Martin Taylor on. He can play uh, centre-back and sacrifice a midfield player. Discussion between Haman and Gerard, who can both belt the ball, of course. As you know. Oh, it's a clever little disguised chip for Kuehl, but not clever enough to fool Birmingham. In and Cissé wins it back. That sending off couldn't have come at a worse time because they've got a real lift from the three substitutions. And now, well, I wouldn't say they've been flattened, but uh, there's still plenty of time. However, the job has just become a lot more difficult. Well, what they've done is uh, just shoved Tebley into a, a centre-back position. It's not uh, a foreign position for him, of course. He's played there a number of times for Birmingham City. Damien Johnson will uh, just drop into that right-back role, and uh, well, it is going to be very, very difficult now for Birmingham to get anything out of this match. Liverpool have been the better side, there's no one can take that away from them and uh, Birmingham have uh, stuttered and spluttered and never really got close to the visitors. Reset. Now Danny Murphy. Get in, finds Gerrard. Sheer determination and single-mindedness of Steven Gerrard to get onto that through ball, commit himself, but made Cunningham commit himself. Reese's shot. Well, certainly a comfortable one, isn't it, for the goalkeeper Ian Bennett? And these are the opportunities now Liverpool are going to have because uh, the numerical advantage. John Alvarez is going to have the license to get forward more on that left-hand side. He'll be disappointed not to have taken full advantage of it. He does. Uh, 
possess a decent strike with his left foot. Didn't really catch that the way that he was looking for. Two games to go for Arsenal, incredibly, to go through the entire Premiership season unbeaten. They're at Fulham tomorrow, Fulham's final game at Loftus Road before they return to Craven Cottage. It's live on Sky Sports 1, our programme begins at 3.30. Murphy, Harry Kuehl, oh, 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 ball by Kuehl, and the uh, Birmingham theme tune, keep that on to the end of the road, ringing around St Andrews, they'll do that all right, but uh, that road's just got a heck of a lot longer. Kuehl goes down under the challenge, and Referee not only whistles for a free kick, but I think might be producing a card here. Well, that's uh, Cissé's first challenge, isn't it, really? So West Steve Dunn certainly not going to give the Birmingham City midfield player the benefit of the doubt. Very much like Robbie Savage in many ways, Cissé's very competitive. You see there, he's uh, very high, isn't he, on Harry Kuehl. Just about dealt with the free kick, but reset, make sure Liverpool keep possession. Steven Gerrard, booed by the Hung fans, who thought he made the most of the challenge from Cunningham. Here's Haman. Well, again, disappointing, wasn't it, from uh, Dimar Haman. He's right, trying to get it onto his more favoured right foot, but he has to take it on his left, and really is a swinger, isn't it? From the Liverpool midfield player. Well, I talked about the uh, domination of Liverpool. Certainly a lot more attempts on goal, and they've had the uh, lion's share of possession. And of course, they've two goals to show for it, and they really have looked threatening throughout the evening. Ironic cheer, isn't it, that uh, Burnham get a free kick? Russell looking to get away from Carragher. And Dudek with a good climb. Food and drink, isn't it? Liverpool keeper. Well, it's been far, far from a satisfactory season for Liverpool, obviously. Knocked out of the Carling Cup by Bolton, the FA Cup by Portsmouth, the UEFA Cup by Marseille. But there will be massive consolation in finishing fourth and gaining a qualifying position for the Champions League next season. They're not there yet. They've got to get through this game safely, and then, of course, the big one next Saturday at Anfield against Newcastle United. Certainly a lot of frustration about the uh, Liverpool performances this season, but, you know, when you look at their squad, they really uh, should have done a lot better. There's a lot of quality. You, know, you look at these uh, first 11 today, everywhere you look, you look at international football players. And I'm sure Gerard Houllier will be just as disappointed as the Liverpool fans that they really haven't performed on a consistent basis. But when you see them play today and you see how good they've performed, then it really is uh, amazing that they find themselves so far behind the likes of Arsenal in this Premier League. There's John Arnold reset. Yeah, it's just to pick up on what you were saying, it was only a couple of years ago that Liverpool finished seven points behind the champions Arsenal well at the moment they're 28 points behind Arsenal and that's I think one of the complaints from many Liverpool fans that not only has the gap not been reduced it's actually widened but there has not been a peep from the Anfield boardroom about the future of this guy for all the uh, headlines and speculation and the radio phone-ins Liverpool board have been firmly behind their manager and I believe will continue to be so for some time yet. Harry Kiel. It was a difficult ball to deal with and Liverpool got a corner out of it. That was a good ball, wasn't it? They had every right to expect uh, either Emil Heskey or Michael Owen to show a little bit more desire to get to that near post and... Uh, you can see both of them there, a little bit back on their heels. Now 
Gerard's corner straight into the hands of Bennett. Back, Sammy Hoopia. And now Finnan. Liverpool making full use of their one man advantage at the moment. Michael Owen. Kill. Another one who's said to have had a, a poor season by the standards he displayed for Leeds. Here's Owen. Heskey! Oh, it was uh, almost an identical position from where he scored Liverpool's second goal, but this time wide. Well, Michael Owen does well, really, to dig out any sort of ball, because I thought that he'd lost the opportunity again. Good move from Liverpool, passing slick, it's bright. And really, Birmingham City haven't got anywhere near, like you said, Emil Heskey on that near post on that left foot that he scored his goal from, but this time, can't get it on target. And then, oh well played. Finnan. Another one, angle forward for Michael Owen. Tebbley the man against him this time. He just keeps coming back to the men in red at the moment. Haman. Full credit to the Birmingham fans, they've not lost heart at all, they're going to make a party of this, irrespective of the result. Gerrard. Opened it up brilliantly for himself, Stephen Gerrard just couldn't quite pick out the right shot. Oh, I'd be disappointed not to hit the target, Stephen Gerrard, but really is too comfortable at the moment for Liverpool. Just look at the type of space and time that they're getting just to knock passes around and then get into the final third and try efforts like that and uh, it's now almost becoming a damage limitation going into almost the final quarter of an hour for Birmingham City Liverpool maintaining their good record against Birmingham just one defeat in their last 15 meetings home and away that was uh, when Steve Bruce's team won 2-1 here last season remember Liverpool won 3 1 at Anfield, and they've only managed the home and away double over one team in the Premiership so far this season. That's Blackburn Rovers. So it looks as though they're going to uh, double that particular total. And then Steve Bruce now being sung by the Birmingham fans who uh, indulge in all their favourite songs. I think knowing that the game's probably gone past them, but who knows if they could get one goal back. Well, they appreciate and they know that uh, the job that their manager has done really has been first class. I think they were one of the, uh, the favourites, weren't they, to be amongst the bottom three at the beginning of the season, but he steered them towards uh, the top ten. And a wonderful achievement. No disrespect to the players that he's got here, but uh, they really have overperformed. In his clearance, Heskey, Murphy. And on it goes again for Steven Gerrard, who's got his mate Michael Owen up with him. And picks him out perfectly. Oh, well, he had to take the first touch past goalkeeper Bennett, and then it had just got too far away from him. Well, I think this would have been a uh, contender for goal of the season. From back to front, once again, that surge from Steven Gerrard, showing so much pace, and then the ability to just get his head up and spot a player in a better position. That player was Michael Owen. I thought he was going to take that first time. Finnan, Haman, Harry Kuehl, great run by Kuehl, he's almost uh, won the ball back off with the last defender as well, I said before people have said he's had a poor season but you know he's still got 11 goals and has been played mainly in midfield, and he's had injury problems as well, so he had uh, a problem I think it was to his ankle that seem to really struggle to shake off but at the moment it looks very fluent and so does Emil Heskey here but uh, as we read this back again 
to stab the ball behind for a corner. Did well, Lazaridis, not a natural left back, but he reads the situation well. Emil Heskey looked odds on there to get into that space and just comes across Lazaridis and uh, does a good job. Sonny Hoopy has come forward for this Liverpool corner. Murphy is still there, but that's over his head. Clearance has taken it straight to Heskey. Gerard. Poor clearance by Tevely. It's very difficult, isn't it? There's nowhere uh, to really go. Such has been Liverpool's dominance in this. Uh, Second half, to be fair, for the majority of the game, they just passed the ball around, made Birmingham City work, and of course, when Kenny Cunningham got sent off, the fact that Birmingham were 2 0 down it made it so tough for the home side to get anywhere near Liverpool. Victory today will take Liverpool on to 59 points, Aston Villa currently on 56, and because of that goal difference. Uh, nine in Liverpool's favour. It's going to be more than that, of course, now as well, when you add in uh, today's final score. It looks as though Villa are out of contention now. It looks as though it's just between Liverpool and Newcastle for fourth place. And there is a scenario, of course, uh, by which it could all be over before those two meet at Anfield next week. Eski. Danny Murphy. Liverpool want to keep looking for goals to improve their uh, goal difference even further. I just think it's been a, a, a great balance to their performance, Liverpool. You know, they've done everything right, made the, the right decisions in the right areas. I'm sure Gerard will be absolutely delighted with the way his side has played. They really have hit some good form over the last couple of weeks, and it's probably that form that uh, will see them now clinch that full spot. Sure, Newcastle have still got a lot to say about that particular area of the table. Finnan. Kuehl. The man shakes off the challenge from Stern John. Now Murphy. Risa. at the moment, Liverpool just stroking it around at ease. Finnan. Here's Murphy. Watson's header away, has gone straight to Finnan. Kuehl. Now Danny Murphy, Risa to his left. Gerard, great football. Heskey couldn't quite get it back to Murphy. Just too crowded there. No, they're just uh, keeping it for fun at the moment, aren't they, Liverpool? And then uh, when the opportunity arises, making tackles like that in midfield. You know, we talked about the balance. Well, to get good balance, you need to do both sides of the game right, and that's what Liverpool have done today. When they've been in possession, they've shown a tremendous amount of quality, and when they haven't had the ball, they've worked tremendously hard to get it back. Could come to goal difference, of course, between Liverpool and Newcastle. At the start of uh, today, Liverpool were plus 15 to Newcastle's plus 12, so that's the reason why they will keep looking for a third goal, I'm sure. Liverpool have also scored more than Newcastle, if it comes to that uh, particular criteria. Binnen. to Morrison back deep inside his own half and really the sending off I think has uh, just about ruined any hope Birmingham had of getting back into this game. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff about them hasn't it and uh, you know, when uh, Steve made the three substitutions just seemed to bring a, a little bit of life into the side but uh, since the sending off it really has uh, been 
a very flat performance. Harry Keel caught offside. I think that's a look of disbelief. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not happy, and that's very, very tight, isn't it? Very tight. Well, that ball's played. You never look at uh, the defender. I think it's uh, Tebley in the centre of the picture there. It looked as if he was just playing Harry Keel onside. Yes. Well, what Liverpool don't want now, of course, is a nervous final. Uh, be just about 10 minutes, won't it, including stoppage time. The Birmingham goal could produce that. It doesn't look likely. But you never know. Hobson's there to win it back for Birmingham. Hughes. He was actually born in Liverpool. So was this fella. Very proud of it. Real red. Just said a little bit too much on the pass, didn't it, Stephen Gerrard? Read the run of Michael Owen. And uh, he really has, once again, gave a very energetic performance at the heart of uh, that midfield for Liverpool. For Sal. Stern John, giving away to Sammy Hoopia. Well, you do feel for Birmingham, don't you? You know, they've had such a good season, especially the last home game. They really would have wanted to give a big performance. Good ball there by Heskey to Kuehl. Owen is up with him. I think he's going to go alone. He's uh, a little self-indulgent, I think. Well, he was always going to try and get this ball onto his left foot, and... Uh, you can see how ragged Birmingham City have become now with uh, all the substitutions and, of course, down to ten men. And, uh, he gets onto his favoured left foot, but uh, the execution is poor for Harry Kuehl. Well, we've talked about the uh, likelihood of new recruits coming into Birmingham. Of course, Liverpool have got their transfer plans in hand as well. Interesting to see how they uh, strengthen their squad during the reopening of the uh, window. And they make a more credible challenge for the title, I wonder, next season. Azaridis with a header. Carragher gets it away from Forcell. Well, again, you know, Jamie Carragher read the situation well. We talked about it being a little bit of a foreign position for him as a centre-back. There's Lazaridis. Flicked off Finnan for a corner. I think uh, for one moment the Birmingham fans expect their side to win this game, but they'd love to see them score. Stan John took it away from Upson, who was right behind him. And look who it is again, breaking. Gerard onto Haman. It was intended for Owen. He's still there, Stephen Gerard, and he's still running. Look at that. been like that all season as well and he's played a lot of games Stephen Gerrard you know people talk about the rotation and resting players but I'm sure that uh, Gerrard Hulier hasn't really contemplated resting his skipper that often during the course of this campaign he's there again incredible oh what a finish and what a perfect finish for Liverpool Stephen Gerrard has made it 3-0 three points four place is firmly theirs at the moment still a couple of games to go of course but that's a big step to Champions League football for them well, as a player this deserved this is Steven Gerrard you know, we talked about his energy levels and showing great strength and power and very much like the two goals that we've seen before that the simplicity of the finish looks very very easy but believe me that's difficult it really is a tight angle Ian Bennett does everything he possibly can to prevent the strike going past him what a wonderful finish to a great performance. Gerard's sixth goal of a season in which uh, only Thierry Henry and Frank Lampard finished ahead of him in the PFA's Player of the Year poll. That's how highly he's rated by his fellow professionals. Uh, you have to 
think that if he can give that type of performance during the summer as well, because he doesn't look tired. And uh, if he can uh, produce the type of quality and the determination and drive that we see week in, week out for Liverpool, then you'd have to think that he is going to be a big performer in the European Championships in Portugal in the summer. He's still only 23 as well, Steven Gerrard. He, he's matured into such a terrific player for one so young. Owen, Heskey, so many good individual performances from Liverpool today, but I think what will please Gerard Houllier more than anything is the collective performance. Yeah, I think this is good, a comprehensive performance that I've seen Liverpool give for an awful long time. They've had their critics this season, and uh, anybody watching here today, and there's a lot of Liverpool fans have travelled down to Birmingham, I'm sure there's a lot watching on their TVs back at home, they really will have been mightily impressed with the way that Liverpool have played. Watching in the pubs more likely, I would think. <laughs> you can get away with that, see, you're from there. <laughs> yes, the old cash tills will be ringing and a few uh, licensed houses, I would think, on Merseyside off the back of this one. Newcastle are not out of the equation yet. They've got uh, Wolves, of course, tomorrow, already relegated, but uh, could be a sting in the tail there. Don't write them off by any means. And then Southampton in the week before they go to Anfield. So it's a tough, tough week for Newcastle. Liverpool have to be the favourites now for that fourth place. Good football here from Birmingham. Clinton Morrison for Sell. And gets it away. Corisa well, started the game with a crack again. and he's finished it in the same way. Well, he just left himself open, you know, just as he was going to play the ball. He just opened his body up and uh, he should have perhaps played it a little bit quicker. And because of that, he just got caught. Only a minute of stoppage time. A comprehensive victory in the offing for Liverpool. Murphy. Now reset. Got a few empty seats at St Andrews now, but in fairness, most of the fans have stayed on to see what would be the uh, traditional lap of honour from their players as Owen bursts into the penalty area, tries to make it four, but fails. Oh, what a chance. You really would have expected Michael Owen to take that one, wouldn't you? He does everything right. The pass is absolutely superb. Again, gets out of his feet, showing good pace, opens his body up. He knows exactly what he wants to do to curl it into that far post, and then he just gets it totally wrong. Johnson and giving away to Gerard. It's a good ball. It's kill. Well, that's great play by Harry Kuehl. Now Murphy. successful club in the history of English football fourth place might sound like scant consolation but my word Liverpool would take it if it was offered now fourth place is what they possess now Newcastle United the only team who can deny them that position and that final Champions League qualifying spot Steven Gerrard produced a captain's performance rounded off with Liverpool's final goal of a game in which Michael Owen had given them the lead the Liverpool fans delighted with their performance and so too will be their manager. It was Liverpool at their best today. The sending off for Kenny Cunningham when he brought down Steven Gerrard was the final nail in the coffin really for Birmingham who brought on three substitutes and breathed new life back into their game. But Heskey's second goal 
and then the clincher from Steven Gerrard made it too big a mountain for them to climb. Birmingham end up their campaign at St Andrews with a defeat, but it's been a terrific season for them too. Liverpool go on with that big prize still in sight. They've beaten Birmingham here by three goals to nil. Well, that was emphatic, wasn't it? And it does rule Aston Villa out of the Champions League scenario. Liverpool on to 59 points from 37 played, a plus 18 goal difference, 12 better than Villa. Newcastle, of course, at home to Wolves tomorrow, then away at Southampton on Wednesday before travelling to Liverpool on the final Saturday of the season. At the moment, they're six points behind Liverpool with two games in hand. Their goal difference is not as good. They've scored seven less goals as well. So it basically means Newcastle require two pretty emphatic victories against Wolves and then against Southampton. Otherwise, a point will probably be enough for Liverpool, if that, when they meet at Anfield this time next week. Now there's uh, more football to look forward to on Sky Sports this evening from La Liga, Celta Vigo against Barcelona, followed by Real Madrid and Mallorca. Go to Sky Sports Extra for that right now. But much to discuss when we come back. George's thoughts, a third straight win for Liverpool. Three excellent goals. The third of them scored by Steven Gerrard, who is as immense as he always is. And Liverpool have found a rich vein of form at a critical period in the season. Welcome back to St Andrews, where Birmingham are conducting their end-of-season lap of honour. Disappointing end of the season, of course, for Steve Bruce and his side. Their sixth home defeat, their second heaviest, in front of 29,593, which is St Andrews' biggest crowd since they rejoined the Premiership a couple of seasons ago. Overall, though, they'll be fairly happy with what they've seen. George, this season, won't they? Marcus, he'll be delighted. I mean, he's been there, Steve Bruce, now two and a half years, got a promotion. Finished up in a lovely position last uh, last season, I think just uh, mid-table. And this season, they've been in the top ten nearly all the season. Uh, well organised, well coached, very sound defensively. Now he's got to take in the next stage, and that is more creativity in the middle of the pitch, and probably somebody else to score more goals. They must get more goals, apart from for sales. They've got to get somebody in, in there with more than double figures. And uh, but he must be absolutely delighted, you know, the way it's progressing the club. And the board seem to be backing him financially as well. So uh, everything looks nice and rosy at St Andrews. Yes, they finished 13th last season. They're 10th at the moment with one more game to come at Blackburn next weekend. In a perverse sort of way, this little dip in form might just have played into Steve Bruce's hands, mightn't it? Yes, uh, it's been a, a funny season because, you know, around about that fourth, fifth and sixth position this season, Marcus, there's been so many clubs, you know, um, giving the supporters uh, false hopes of being up there. And if you're going to get up there on a regular basis, you've got to have a good foundation and not just be up there for one season and then drift right down to the relegation zone again. So probably finishing around about the tenth position improvement in last season that still gives them a leeway for improving next season again. Well they're drifting towards the finishing line. Liverpool hitting form at just the right time as they go in search of that fourth place. Michael Owen set them on their way. Emil Heskey with the through pull. Wonderfully work move for the second goal. Steven Gerrard, well he's just playing out of his skin every single week. Emil Heskey with a second goal in two Premiership matches. Birmingham down to 10 men early in the second half. Little dispute about that red card. Kenny Cunningham shown red to uh, Steve Bruce's huge disappointment. Gerald was just too strong, too quick, too powerful for him. And eventually Liverpool made the extra man count and it was Gerald himself wrapping things up. I don't think too many people would have predicted a 3-0 away win for Liverpool today but that's exactly what they've managed. They did it without a caution as well. Damien Johnson shown yellow, so was Alio Cisse and a red card for Kenny Cunningham. But Steve Dunn, to be fair, did his best to keep the game motoring. Earlier today in the Premiership, a win for Bolton, their fifth in a row at Everton. Leeds let slip a 3-1 lead. 
against uh, Charlton, left the three Portsmouth one. One apiece at Old Trafford, so Chelsea guaranteed second place now. Middlesbrough ending a run of three straight defeats against Manchester City. Lucky for City, they were already safe. Southampton won, Aston Villa won. A significant result as far as Liverpool are concerned. Those two drop points have removed Villa from the Champions League scenario and Spurs beating Blackburn by a goal to nil at White Hart Lane. Jermaine Defoe, the man on target for troubled Tottenham. So at the top, Arsenal we know are champions, Chelsea we know will be second, Manchester United we know now will finish third. Liverpool 59 from 37, three clear of Villa. Goal difference means that Villa can't catch them. Newcastle still can with their three remaining games, but it's asking an awful lot of Sir Bobby's side with all their injuries. And Bolton mustn't be discounted as we look at the race for fifth place in the UEFA, uh, the UEFA Cup spot that's still available. That could yet have a little twist on the final day of the season. And after Bolton, it's Charlton, Fulham and Birmingham. Down at the bottom, Wolves. Leeds and Leicester and then Manchester City, Everton, Tottenham up to 15th now Portsmouth, Blackburn, Southampton and Middlesbrough. Steven Gerrard, not for the first time, not for the last, has been named man of the match here and Emil Heskey are now talking to Guy Havord. Steven, another huge step towards that fourth place. Yeah, it was a massive game for us today. Obviously we're at home next week so we fancy our chances there. But um, this was their most important game we thought of the season. Um, as I say, it's still in our, hand, in our hands. Um, hopefully Newcastle will slip up tomorrow, but Villa have drew today, so it was important to capitalise, and we took three important points. Was that a big boost to you? It was a massive boost. It was a great team performance. We knew coming here it was always going to be hard. Steve Bruce has done a fantastic job this season. He's got them all up for it. But um, you know, gradually we've worn them out. Um, obviously, when they went down to ten men, that was a, another big step, but I thought we could control the game all the way through. And Emil, you had a hand in the opening two goals, setting up the first and scoring the second. Yeah, it was good, you know. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough game today. They're a great side. Um, closed us down, closed our, all our avenues off. But um, we got one and Mo got the early goal and then it just went on from there. Was it one of the most accomplished away performances this season by Liverpool? Yeah, we knew it was going to be hard. Um, having played here last year and, and, and being beat, you know, so we knew it was going to be a tough game. Uh, the fans are always behind them. Uh, it spurs them on. But um, we got the result we deserve, really. Stephen, you scored the third. It could have been four or five, really, once the sending off came along. Yeah, it could. As I say, we've played very well today. We've created chances, but I think the manager will be more pleased with the clean sheet. You know, obviously, that's the third on the row, so we've got to keep that going into next week. And as I say, we fancy our chances to snap this fourth up now. Emil, you were very close to winning the uh, Man of the Match award. Every newspaper I pick up at the moment has you heading off to Birmingham. Is there any truth in that? Um, who knows? You know, um, I'm still here, so and I'll keep playing for Liverpool until told otherwise. Do you expect to be at Anfield next season? I hope so. Stephen, I suppose now you've just got to see the job off against Newcastle next weekend. Yeah, we have. As I say, this was the most important game because we were away from home and we knew Steve Bruce has got a good side here. So, you know, our confidence is up. We're playing well. We're keeping clean sheets. So. As I say, we fancy our chances next week, but Newcastle are going to come and make it difficult for us. Oh, well done, you've just shaded. Emil, if you'd like to hand over the uh, Barclay card Cheers champagne. Cheers, thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank Two you. very impressive performers. Uh, before <coughs> Bolton fans get too excited, if they are to steal fifth place, as I suggested just a few moments ago, um, they'll have to win their last game 6-0. Um, Aston Villa would have to lose 6-0 or so, and various other results would have to go their way. So it's, it's rather unlikely, sorry to put you in a state of animated excitement, it isn't going to happen, but a terrific achievement nonetheless. And a very impressive display by Liverpool today, George, wasn't Fantastic. it? Fantastic. Really, it really was excellent. And uh, man of the match, Gerard. I mean, he's got so much energy, you know, in his game. And you could just see in the second half there they were bursting through you know from midfield to get goal scoring opportunities and to set up goals for other people that's why I think when a man's playing a man has got to be there to be the anchor man in midfield and just let Gerard go and flow and join the forwards because he's that good going forward that I think when a man was a, was injured for quite a large part of the season Gerard then had to play a holding role and I think that stopped Liverpool uh, attacking wise up front, they were terrific today, Esky, uh, Heskey and Owen, they were gelling, they were playing off each other, um, they both scored a goal. To be fair, Michael Owen could easily have had a hat-trick, but that's being a little bit picky, isn't it? Well, um, I, I, bet, uh, I bet Jared is wondering why they can't play like this on a regular basis. I mean, you never get it every match, but when you're a manager, you're looking for a consistency there with your two strikers. and. Uh, you know, I've, I've watched them so many times play together, but today was, you know, they were really uh, telepathic. You know, you know, their work off the ball, especially in the first half. I thought the first half they were excellent. 
half-hearted claims there by Birmingham that Heskey might have used his hand. Ball. Good, good, uh, great ball, good vision from Heskey and Michael Owen. That wonderful 10, 15 yards pace and slits it in with outside his right foot. Just what Sven Joran Eriksson wants to see 35 days before the uh, European Championships yeah. start. Well, look at Gerard here, Marcus. I mean, he burst through superbly. And I'll bet you any money the English fans want to see that, you know, in Portugal this, this summer. Yeah. Well, this was a very good finish from Heskey. And when you see him finish like that, yeah. you wonder why he's only managed, what is it, seven Premiership goals in 35 appearances? Well, I've just got a feeling that Emil is definitely enjoys playing away from home, you know, away from the pressures at Anfield. You know, and there's much more space and room, and that's one thing he loves. He's very strong, powerful, and I think he prefers the space to get away from home rather than playing at Anfield. Any chance Birmingham had of getting back into the game disappeared with the sending off of Kenny Cunningham, and this wasn't one of Steve Dunn's more difficult yeah. decisions. Well, look, at, look at Gerard here. I mean, the pace is unbelievable. And Cunningham, who's been at a great season at the back for, for Birmingham. There was only one winner there. To be fair, Cunningham was turning, wasn't yeah. he? Which, which gave uh, Gerard a little bit of extra look at, time. But Look at the yards Gerard made there. I mean, he was just surging past Cunningham there. Unfortunately for him, he had to go. He did. Uh, down to 10 men, Birmingham did their best to hold on. But, but Gerard grew in strength throughout the game and perhaps fitting that he scored the third goal. Yeah, he was colossal. I think since they made him captain, it's, it's added to his uh, responsibility in the game. And that just typifies him here. He's desperate to get in that attacking third and in the box, not only to support the forwards, but actually to get in there and go, go beyond the front two. And this is the way he can finish. And when you see Liverpool's key players performing like this, it is a, a bit of a mystery that they're 25 points behind Arsenal, isn't it? Irrespective of the fact that Arsenal have played so well. It is, this you know, and it's, uh, it's probably a question that Gerard, you know, will only, only he can answer. You know, why there's so many points behind? Because they're a big club with some outstanding players, and uh, it's taken them a little while to get into that fourth spot on a regular, a regular basis. We could have a word with Gerard Hulier right now. He's waiting to talk to us. Good evening, Gerard. Good evening, Marcus. Good I, evening, George. I imagine you rather enjoy that performance. Just how good was it from where you were sitting? I enjoyed the way we played. Uh, I think uh, we, we show strength, discipline and uh, a lot of desire about our game. I mean we know that uh, there's great aspiration to get into the, uh, uh, the fourth place uh, which means that every game has a lot <laughs> at stake but I thought we dealt with that uh, with a lot of composure at times, a lot of discipline and um, I'm, I'm very, very pleased and very proud of the players today. Did the Aston Villa result give you a little bit of a boost going into the game, knowing they dropped a couple of points? Funny enough, I said in my team talk that I don't want them to uh, um, worry about the others. Uh, we, we've got two cup finals to play and uh, we'll, we'll give our best shot in every game. And I thought today our performance here was probably one of the best away performance. The front two have had their critics this season, Gerard, but they really seemed to gel this evening. Yeah, they, they worked hard. I mean, uh, if uh, Birmingham didn't have a lot of chances, it's probably because uh, they, they worked very hard in the closing down and delayed the, their offensive play, sometimes forced them to have long balls. Of course, we've got the height to the back to deal with that. And then the midfield could, you know, could close down uh, easily. And uh, I, th I thought it was a very great team performance. But uh, it's very difficult to say this one was better than that one. Although I would say that my captain deserves his goal at the end. Absolutely. Uh, two goals in two games now for Emil Heskey. There is, of course, mm. a lot of talk about his imminent future. How close are you to making a decision about him? Well, first of all, uh, I must say that uh, Emil and Michael, as I said, had a tremendous game. Uh, but Emil's commitment has been fantastic and uh, knowing the speculation around him uh, I would say that the, the uncertainty or the confusion that could be about his future um, now he's grown up enough and to put that aside and uh, focus on his game and uh, he had I would say a very typical Emil Eski performance working very hard for the team and doing everything we needed as a striker. And if he carries on like that, there's only one more game this season, of course, but would you like him to stay at the club? Uh, it depends also on him, but uh, uh, obviously everybody would like to keep him. 
He, he has said he's, he's happy to stay. He, he'd quite like to stay. So I don't it, think it, this is the time and the moment to talk about players, the individual and the futures. I think it's the time just to praise them for their performance. Jared, any particular reason why you've had suddenly had this lovely vein of forum towards the end of the season? Um, I'll, I'll, George, probably I'll tell you in private, uh, <laughs> maybe at the end of the season, because I don't want to go back on the problems we had. Um, all I know is that uh, our strength and uh, our form comes, as everybody seems to be back, um, at the right moment in the league. And the wonderful forum at Gerrard's, uh, 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 Stephen Gerrard's hit uh. at the end of the season, is that the reason why Haman has come back and sort of played the holding role to let Stephen get forward a lot more? That's part of the uh, tactical you know, work that we have, yes. Uh, Didi is like a front sweeper and it gives more leeway, I would say, to uh, Stevie to go forward. Gerard, you are now on the verge of claiming fourth place. I imagine you'll be following Newcastle's progress with interest tomorrow yeah. and then at Southampton on Wednesday night? Yes, but I mean, we know it's now and now. And uh, as it has been for a few weeks, people seem to forget that we've been in the fourth place uh, for about two months now. And uh, I can tell you the boys will give everything uh, that is possible to give. Uh, to keep that fourth place and it'll be an Anfield and it'll be a great, uh, great afternoon. Well you can almost taste Champions League football next season. Thanks for talking to us and well done this evening. Well Thank done, you. Jared. Thanks George. He's a happy man. Yeah, he doesn't want to talk too much about Emil Heskey's future but that's <laughs> not for just now is it? Well that's business uh, Marcus <laughs> but uh, I would think uh, probably this summer there's a lot of uh, big talking got to be done at Anfield. You know the players, you know who's going to come in, who's going to... Because I think this, the, the next season for him and also for Liverpool is going to be a big season. And when they do produce a display like that, well, you realise, I mean, we all know the potential at Liverpool Football Club, it's been too long since their last title but they've got world class players, there's no question about about that is there? There's no question about it, but uh, you know, you saw today, you know, away from home, I think they're a bit more relaxed. I think they can soak up a little bit of pressure when the home team's coming, coming attacking them, and then you know, they, they can break out and play the type of football that I'm sure they would like to play at Anfield. Very happy away day for Liverpool. Not such a good finale for Birmingham City at St Andrews. When we come back, we'll hear from Steve Bruce. He's tasted some highs this season. Today was a, a little bit of a low. His reaction next.